We're standing on the north side of the uh, Centre Pompidou, which, or the Pompidou Centre, which as Jane, who's holding the camera right now, just called it the world's largest hamster cage. They put all the innards on the outside so you can see what was going on in a modern building. And I will say that while the outside is kind of filthy and uh, a little bit strange, it does make for a very special interior. It looks wonderful. If you're gonna be in this area, you might be wondering what to do for food and you're in luck because running along the northern side of it is Rue Rambuto, which is one of the most fun, fancy little food streets on the edge of the Marais that you probably never knew existed. We're gonna give you Paris in My Pockets quick guide to Rue Rambuto, along with freezing little Cooper here, so you can see what you might want to eat if you happen to be in the Marais near the Pompidou or even at Les Al and getting a little bit peckish. Let's go. Of course, if you're looking for one of the more unique pastries in town, Le Gay Choc offers that with their particular brioche, which is in the shape of a tree, as it were. Please don't demonetize me, YouTube. They've got a lot of other pastries. Of course, it's, it's, a, it's a full bakery. They've got pain au chocolat and crumbles and all kinds of delicious things in there as well, but they're not really famous for that. They're famous for something in particular. Might have to censor this part. I... Delicious. It's the first time I've ever put one of these in my mouth, and it's surprisingly chocolatey. People love this place, fairly attention grabbing. It used to be located a few blocks from here, so if you're looking for it and you don't find it where it used to be, that's because it's on Rambuto now. So, you know, you gotta come here for your um, tree brioche. Also, it's a play on words. I don't know if you caught that. Le gay choc, choc, chocolate, and shocking. Just like the like leprechaun that just went riding by. That was weird. Too bad we didn't catch that on camera. <laughs> The really good option for coffee that you're gonna find all over the city is Terre de Café. This one's a little bit small, as many of them are, and not quite as work-friendly, at least when I walked by a minute ago, so I didn't pop in here. But if you're looking for a faster coffee on the street and you don't wanna go all the way out of your way to Strata, Terre de Café, great spot to do it. They're a great spot to buy a bag of coffee if you'd like something unique to bring home, and also a great spot for a quick takeaway coffee, or you can sit out in front here. There's not a whole lot of seating. Uh, watch the world go by for a minute before you head on to stuff your face with, you know, something delicious like a burger or ramen or a lobster roll. There's a lot of food on this street. Strata's a good spot to sit for a little bit. This is their right bank location. They've got another one on the left bank, which I prefer. A lot more natural light, it's beautiful. But uh, this one, much closer for our purposes today. And that pain perdu, just in case you were wondering what the French call French toast, pain perdu, or lost bread, was delicious. Crispy, sugary, sweet, and with just the right amount of fruit for every bite. It was super, super good. The coffee was also very good. This guy is so tired. He's, he's definitely overdue for a nap. But thankfully, I was able to pop in there, sit, work for a little bit, enjoy that coffee and that French toast. And in a demi portion, they gave me a half portion of French toast, which I didn't know was possible. So in total, the coffee and the French toast together only cost me seven euros and 50 cents, which is not bad. That's a great way to buy a, a table for a couple of hours. So you ready to fall asleep while we get lunch? Or are you ready to play with the big dog? That's a big dog. Let's go get lunch. Back to Rambuto. I think where we're gonna go for lunch right now is a little bit of pastrami, big pastrami. Where we're headed for lunch is Janet by Homer. Homer Food Group has a number of restaurants around. They had the best lobster roll of 2018, which we will be trying in this video. It's just down the street. But they just opened this pastrami shop over here. So if you're missing your New York vibes, you want pastrami, a hot dog, or some corned beef, this is gonna be the place to do it. Let's go check out Janet by Homer and get ourselves a little bit of the deli experience. They have their own house truffle chips, which are really, really good. Or there's truffle oil on them, I'm guessing. Delicious. And this one's the house specialty, the Janet. Was it the onion jam, pickles, whole bunch of meat, which you can get like lean or fatty or a mix, which I got the mix, and then it looks delicious. Oh my gosh, I'm ready for this. I'm also just trying to keep the dog from flopping on the floor. It's not the most dog-friendly seating in the world, but that's fine, because most of you won't have dogs when they're coming in here. But that's a challenge that I've given myself to live through in life, but here we go. Oh, yeah. That's a delicious sandwich. Crispy, buttery, like kind of everything. It's a, it's a lot of meat, but it definitely was worth it. I'm gonna eat this as fast as I can and get this guy somewhere where he can take a nap because he didn't get enough of a nap earlier. I don't want to pound through this, but it is a poundable sandwich. Highly recommend trying the specialty Janet corned beef sandwich. I just got the normal. There's an extra version that has like 50% more meat on it. So if this doesn't look like enough to you, which is definitely enough for me, it, don't worry, there's more, you can have more. That was really good. It was 19 euros for the sandwich, chips, and a drink. The sandwich itself was 13.90. A little bit pricey, not too bad, but if you're looking for a slightly cheaper option, 
and you want something that's equally filling and a little bit warm and delicious, then Holy Ramen might be the spot for you. Also, quick shout out to today's patron producer, Caitlin Miller. Thanks for helping uh, put us out here to try all this food out and tell you what's good and what's not. Uh, I really, really appreciate it. And to all my patrons for making this possible. Uh, back to the back to the food parts. Another spot that we might not have time or stomach space to fit is the Falafel du Liban. Uh, it is one of my favorite shawarmas in town. The only drawback is they don't have fries. That said, uh, it's still very delicious. If you like some Lebanese food and you want to stop in, have one real quick and bounce on out, it's good. The other spot we're going to show you just over here is Manouche, which has a phenomenal, very salty, very delicious wrap called the Manouche. Wait, is it the Manouche? No, no, this is a tart. You're going to let's go. Let's go check it out. If you've been craving salt while you're in Paris and you just can't seem to get it anywhere, I feel you. Never enough salt on the food around here. Maybe that's just me. Maybe that tells you a lot about me in one go. But the Zatar wrap is going to be phenomenal. It's cheap and it's a good extra that you can take with friends and tear up. And then, uh, you know, just eat alongside whatever other delightful chicken or cheese wrap you get. How's this going over here? He's, well, he's awake. He's gone, he's gone for it. If you want a meaty recommendation, the Dejaj. The Dejaj is really, really good. I would go for that one. There's no seating here, so you do want to take it to a park nearby, which there is the Anne Frank Park. I'd highly look that up. It's kind of a secret park around the corner. And uh, then see if you can find some sunshine. Give it a go. Also no fries here, just in case you were hoping for that. But they do have some tasty little fried treats. Holy Ramen is a new addition. It's not the only holy restaurant that we're gonna be talking about over the course of these videos, but it is the holiest ramen that I've found so far. And as you may have noticed for lunch today, it's a little bit cheaper. They've got a lunch menu at 14 euros. They get you ramen, a side, and a drink. The miso is so good for the ramen. I had that before. I'm probably gonna have that again. We'll see what we have inside. Jess is with me and we'll see what she has. We might try to split it up and make sure we show you some different things, but it's delicious. It's quick, very nice service. And uh, it feels like you're just sitting in a slice of Tokyo, says the guy who was gonna go to Tokyo before COVID shut Tokyo down and he wasn't able to go. So don't take my word for it. Talk to somebody who's been to Japan. And let's go eat some ramen. Merci beaucoup. I got the pork miso. I just couldn't resist the miso. And we ordered a whole bunch of sides. Jess is a little bit jet lagged, so don't wanna go overboard on the food, but we're kinda going overboard on the food a little bit. This isn't gonna be a series where I eat myself to death and over order. I'm coming back multiple times to the street so that they're actual meals and uh, hopefully no food gets wasted in the process. We got the pork bao and pork gyoza, I think. We, or, is it, or is the gyoza chicken? I don't actually know what's in the gyoza or uh, pot stickers, as you might call them as well. Nicely fried, pan fried for us. A little bit of side of sauce, sweet potato fries, beer. Fussy puppy. The staff are babysitting the dog for the moment, which is the perfect time to eat ramen. Prepare the spoon first, but it helps. Mm -hmm. Beef this time. It's also gonna be great. The bao is really good. Loaded with really, really fresh vegetables. The chili sauce is a good call. There's an extra good, you need that spice. And, um, Light, fluffy, tasty. It's always a good call. Right next to Holy Ramen is Burger Joint. Burger Joint is done by the Rousseau. The Rousseau is one of my favorite burger places up in the 18th. Phenomenal service, delicious fries, delicious burgers. Their special sauce is really good. Burger Joint is this little hole in the wall that is the saving grace of the burger scene here. Uh, generally in the Marais, to be honest. There is Hank Burger around the corner for the vegans among you. If you would like to get a vegan burger, it's just a couple blocks away, so you can do that. Nothing vegan here as far as I'm aware. Very good. I don't know that I'm gonna have the time or the stomach space to actually eat in there uh, while we're making the video, but if you're looking for a burger, it is one of the best burgers in town. Small space though, so of course, if you wanna go find a park, you can always do that too. I have no idea what's going on there. We were on the hunt for drinks because we don't know where to go for a drink on the street. We know a lot of places not far from here, but we wanted to stay within a block. So we're on Rue Saint-Martin, which is just off Rambuteau, off of the corner of Pompidou. If you come off the northwestern corner of Pompidou, you might find the 153, Le 153, a cocktail bar that has phenomenal ratings. It looks really cool from the outside, and uh, we're going to give it a try and see how it goes. I imagine it's going to be great, isn't it, Cooper? Cooper is dying for a whiskey sour, aren't you, buddy? Let's go. So we have a whiskey sour in old fashion and the cocktail of the day, which is gin, lavender, lemon, and violet. It smells really good. I wanted to get the whiskey sour, but you know, we wanted to mix it up a little bit and we'll see how we do between the three of us.
little bit challenging to drink. <laughs> Still fairly tasty. Ambiance is nice though. Okay, in order, I, I like the sour the best, then the cocktail of the day, and then the old fashioned. That one's definitely the best, yeah. We did. I inspired you, and now I will suffer the consequences. <laughs> And of course, if you don't want to go for one of the cocktails, they do have a few beers on tap, including Goose Island IPA. Who would have thought? Upstairs, way freaking cooler than down here. Uh, it, it is full, although there were some spots, but I think only for group. Red couches, it's like borderline kitsch, but kind of cool at the same time, nice vibe. Bartenders seemed really active up there. Everything was kind of bouncing, where down here is like chill old people vibe with art on the walls. It's fine, if you want to be more chill, be downstairs. If you want to get a little crazier, I saw a girl unbuttoning her shirt when I was upstairs. I might've caught that on camera. I don't think we should show that on camera. Upstairs is gonna be better. So cocktails are okay. The service is very nice. The people here are friendly. Uh, and then I can't speak for the upstairs bar, but it did look like it was where things were really happening. So bottoms up. This is Homer, we're finally gonna try the lobster roll. It's not gonna be the cheapest, the lunch menu or the lunch combo, we call it a menu in France, it's really annoying. The lunch combo is 23 bucks, unless you uh, supersize it, and then it's 27 bucks. They actually won a stateside competition for the best lobster roll. It's jammed with uh, lemon butter and their secret herb mixture, it's the Connecticut, but you can always get their basic one. I'm gonna go with whatever won the prize. We're gonna see if it's that good. I've never had a lobster roll in Paris before. I don't know if I've ever had a lobster roll before. Maybe once. It also comes on a brioche. That's the other thing. It's a homemade brioche, because they figured, you know what? Let's add a little bit of French style. You're a French boy. Let's go try the lobster roll. Four to two euros for two people. Not bad. Definitely on the pricier side for the lunch options on the street, but good. Connecticut is both of our favorites with the mayo in the bottom. You wanna make sure you eat it from the side to get the full flavor as you go. But the classic is very fresh with the chives. Good, got a, like kind of more of a crunchy vibe to it. So depending if you want a saucy rich one with the Connecticut or a crunchy fresh one with the classic, both very good, decadent, over the top. Lobster roll experience, winner with the toasted bun, the brioche, delicious. This has been Paris in My Pocket, Guide to Rambuteau. I'm gonna be doing a lot more guides to neighborhoods in the city. What's your favorite neighborhood? What's your favorite street in the city? Let us know in the comments below. Maybe it's the one we'll do next. Thought I'd start with one that fewer people know, but I feel like more people should know. And now you know. Now we all know together. Huh, Cooper? He doesn't care. He's fine. He's fine just as he is. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this, make sure to subscribe and check out parisinmypocket.com for all of our guides, tips, tricks. Grab one before you come here to Paris. Put Paris in your pocket. You know, get it on your phone. Get it to go. It's not our motto, but we don't have a motto. So, you know, just don't do Paris like a local. Don't do Paris like a tourist. You could do better than that. I don't know.